Hello and welcome. Here we are again. Right now, every other Tuesday, and we'll see if it changes in the winter or not. Uh, as I said, we will be talking about the difference, uh, exploring what it means to be, to have optimism and to have the ability to perceive possibilities. Now, I heard a really nice word, possibilist. So Marianne is going to take talk more about it. Take us off. Thank you, Corina. And that word, I'm not going to repeat it because I have really difficulties to pronounce it. So we'll see where we I go. To initially. So yes, we had a really great conversation yesterday and we went through several things due to what is possibilities, what is positivity, where do we came from, where are we now? And sitting with it and overnight and, and today still, I wrote a few things. And if that's okay for you, I want to start with those things, a kind of resume where we can start off and see yeah, yeah. what is required now to go with. So positivity, and I will, will speak because what I wrote down, the bullet points comes still from me. Um, so positivity for me, if I go back as how it was for me, is what I got often that many people go with positivity as all will be well when we send love or when we do such and such uh, like yes yeah, something really on top of the things as if i be positive everything will be well whatever that would have mean even and not always that was sitting with me as I consider myself also as a positive person. But what I missed often in the positivity as all is well and when we give love or when we share love and, and then everything will work out as in, yeah, you know, love will, uh, will win, overwin everything. That was for me something like, uh, how do you call it, uh, naive. Mm -hmm. Being a bit naive, not really present with what is. Also a kind of separation. I know now that it was what I could perceive there. And also a kind of avoiding of being present with everything that is mm -hmm. being avoiding to be present with the good the bad and the ugly you know towards possibility for me includes positivity but includes being present with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And why do I say including is it is because I don't go down to the road, the spiral downwards, so I stay upwards. I can ask for the possibilities. I am willing to perceive possibilities. I am willing to receive possibilities because I am not naive because i am present with what is and i am willing to change to be whatever is required to open up the space so it's it's a little different also towards trust for example possibility how much uh, positivity how much is that more like coming from a blind trusted space as i it looks like trust but is it blind trust because there is so many excluded so many energies excluded out of the occasion mm -hmm. 
when we are positive or the general positivity towards within the possibilities, when we are willing to ask for possibilities, when we open us up ourselves for possibilities to receive them, to perceive them, is that coming from a trust that there is something else possible, even though I don't know it? So including that kind of positivity, that was for me the biggest difference as as Mm -hmm. possibilities includes positivity towards positivity not always includes possibilities as could it be also that positivity often comes from a defined conclusion a defined idea a defined Mm -hmm. judgment as all will be well, but having already the image of what that will be, how that will turn out, whatever it is. When with asking the possibilities, there is no definition already. So yes, take on what's coming up with you. (laughs) What is coming up for me is, first of all, Uh, There is a certain passivity in what you call uh, positivity or what I would call hope or uh, maybe also optimism. They Mm -hmm. are sort of similar. Uh, Possibility the ability to perceive possibilities already has a a notion of activity because Mm -hmm. in order to perceive a possibility, the minimum I have to do is ask a few questions. Versus with positivity, as you were describing it, or optimism, there is an assumption that everything will turn out fine. I don't need to worry. And perceiving possibilities doesn't necessarily mean that I need to worry. But as you said, it is being willing to be present with what is and then ask a question. And depending on the information that I get due to asking the questions, the actual possibility that I can then perceive, uh, it requires me to go into action. Yeah. To do something with it. And sometimes I may say, yeah, this is possible, but it's not for me to make that happen. That could be also information. But there is a difference and I really liked and that's why I brought it up uh, uh, I saw a sh- very short video by Frances Morlape that where she talked about uh, she's not an optimist she's a possibilist and I really that really sat with me and said yeah I can see uh alternatives like i was just uh, a part of a, an email a chain that is going back and forth and a lot of people participating and somebody made a, a proposal and then said can you do this or do you want to do this etc and people were saying yes i would like that but i don't know if i can do that and so eventually i just said okay what if we do an, this as an alternative and creating a different scenario uh, and it's a diff uh, in that sense i'm approaching things in a different way i could have just stayed oh okay people are all over the place and don't quite know where to go with it and what to do and yeah i have this problem and that what else is possible? 
It's yeah. the question, and then you look at it, you're present with it, you take in all the information that is available, and then, oh, that could be a possibility. And that, Karina, it is because you were present with all the people involved and their energies that you could perceive the yeah. other possibility and that you could offer. And something that you said that, that triggered uh, something and that is so true for me, going and asking for the possibilities, when you do that out of fear, out of oh. worry, is it that you're asking truly for possibilities? Yeah. For me, that is more like a space coming from, I have to find something because I want to get rid of it or I want to get change it or because there is already a defined yeah. idea of the yeah. outcome. So yeah. possibilities for me has really to see with no outcome, not projecting anything, but being present with all the energies, as you mentioned within that mailing going on and, and looking for ideas and solutions and whatever it was, by being present, not out of a judgment, we go any and we, this is not going anywhere, not out of conclusion, oh, then this it will be, but staying, staying in the question, what else is possible that would work for everyone in this case? Yeah. And that is the beauty for me, is the energy of being positive is a fuel energy that leads towards possibilities. But when I separate myself of all those other energies that are going on, because I am so positive, I always look at the bright side of things. I'm not so sure if that really works. In, in a way, I mean, what, if I take this another step, the way you were saying it, I've already come to the conclusion that me looking at the bright side and not be uh, and not going down that other possibility or those other possibilities. I mean, there is even the conversation if you want to, you. Uh, you have a glass that is half filled with water. And then you have the optimist. Oh, the glass is half full. And you have the pessimist. Oh, the glass is half empty. And you have the so-called realist. The glass is half full. It's half filled half, you know, going neither, neither direction. And in a way, that already highlights the inherent conclusions, assumptions with those perspectives. Exactly. And what this brings up now is, and what and the, the tree can be right, can be wrong. But when I'm curious, is that also required energy to perceive, receive possibilities, to be curious? And at the same time, I can't remember, there was something that you said that, that as a sudden it was also, oh yes, but even a kind of killing energy is part of the possibilities, being a possibility. A possibilist, is it like that? Yes. Yeah. yes, I managed. Yeah. A possibilist is, is like how many times is being a positivist? Is it like that? The 
positive is is coming also from being the good doing the right so all all also there excluding so many different energies yeah and it's, how it's... sorry there is another energy i want to put even in with that mix as what came also in on the other side was and it went <laughs> and it went oh the lie the lie when i be positive and i believe myself if i do so and so and so then i am the good one everyone will see me as the good one um how many lies are there included towards ourselves can we even be present with ourselves so so many energies including or excluding possibilities positivity wow it is really a mix up and what i wanted to say is is it just a conclusion or assumption that if you know if i'm positive then uh, i'm seen as a good person or is there even the need to prove that i'm a good person because i am positive and because i believe in love and there for me there is love and then there is love there is the the, the romanticized love and that's not just love between two people romantically yeah. uh, engaged with, but there is this whole, oh, if I just love them, then everything will be okay. Then they will see the error of their ways. And uh, we need to love uh, everybody. Uh, yes, there, uh, and that is a lesson that I just really, on a very deep level got uh, the other day is there is me, the being acting in a certain way in the world. And there's other people that act in certain ways in the world. And we can look at how they act. And I can look at how they act with the question, what is right about this? What is the possibility of other people responding to those actions? Yeah. And so I can get stuck in, oh, this is a bad person. What they do absolutely sucks. It's hurting people. Or I can see that Hmm. Yes, it sucks. It hurts other people. And what if due to other people being hurt, many people wake up and start seeing what is really going on and start yeah. asking questions. And at that point, I can, I could label it the person being used by divine energy for creating an outcome that nobody would expect and that might not be uh, possible to create any other way. Exactly. Or might be the highest, uh, uh, the most effective way to create that outcome. Or whichever yeah. way uh, you know you want to describe it, and that's a totally different way of looking at loving. I'm not. I see what is going on. I'm not judging the person for that. Yeah. Because I'm willing to hold that possibility of there also being a divine influence that the person is absolutely unaware of 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, who says that divine energy couldn't use the most evil thing and turn it into a positive outcome in the long run that I'm not able to perceive. I only see the evil thing because I don't have a big enough vision. But what if I hold that possibility? And isn't it, Karina, when you never fall and never hurt your knee, for example, <laughs> you will never learn how magical the body is what is required, what, what is possible. And towards what you said was, it came up yesterday due to the long vacation we had or travel we, we did with my partner. He saw yesterday uh, a colleague and he came home and he says, oh, they were so happy to see me again. And they said they missed me and blah, blah, blah. And he ended up with saying, yeah, who doesn't like me? Like everyone likes me. And I answered, and it came out really rapidly. And it is, hey, do you know? I am so happy for me that not everyone likes me. And he looked up like, what are you saying? And I said, yes, because when I am me, of course there will be persons who don't like me, that I am too much for or whatever. So yeah. I don't have to adjust me in every play space, any group with, with so many people. So also this was something that showed me is coming from a kind of naive positivity because of course we, we do like it when people like us. It yeah. is a pleasant feeling, but is it required that everyone likes us? As you mentioned with people, used by the divine who are not even aware of the evil they put out and the, it makes us possible to trigger something in us to open up another process another awareness another acknowledgement another it is balancing out because isn't it that if not would have happened what is happening now due to the COVID, yeah, whatever you can call it. <laughs> there are arising so many names, but the most evil things within is that pushing the most light things also out of the dark. So the light as a divine working through the evil and the persons putting it into the dark but the dark pushes the light above so it is really interesting when we don't judge yeah and stay with what is good about this where does it lead me to is there something within me that is resonating with that and wherefore or whatever it is whatever it is we don't have to categorize the bad the good yeah we don't have and you know the thing is this is are we willing to acknowledge that it takes darkness in order to recognize light and without light you wouldn't be able to recognize darkness. Exactly. So, so is that positive interplay between opposites? And I say positive because what I'm... Maybe positive is, is the wrong word, is the not judged interplay between opposites. If there is no judgment, I can yeah. see both for who they are and how they play together. If I go into judgment, I already uh, limited and cut out everything else. Yeah. And, and as we see it now, how many threats towards death were thrown out of us, the population, worldwide. Mm-hmm. 
and triggered something in so many people and every day more and more people to flip the thing, choosing to live, choosing, thriving, choosing the opposite yeah. that they would never have chosen when that threat, that would trigger, that, that yeah. didn't show up in the way it showed up. Yeah. And isn't that the miracle that life supports life? It doesn't matter through which way. Exactly. You know, and yes, we are, I mean, if I look at climate change, just to name the current word, the big threat, but isn't that basically, I mean, for me, I say the earth is initiating, or earth universe uh, is initiating us, which is true. And it's also an invitation to look at what is life affirming and are we willing to go and affirm life or are we willing to affirm death in the way of, oh, before I have to check out, before I am forced to check out, before I die, I'm going to grab the biggest piece of the pie to the hell, to hell with the rest. Yeah. And there yeah. is an attitude that a person may have. Is that life affirming? And if it is not life affirming, you're not going to make it. Yeah, Karina. And with this is coming also in, we can't judge about someone else because we don't know where they are sitting within the journey, the personal journey. Yeah. yeah. And when, when, Someone has the idea that all that exists or all that is life is what I see, the body, just the body that has a heartbeat, considered that only as life, being alive, whatever it is, that's also fine. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know the person who is seeing it that way, in which way that is taking part in the journey that it is going. Because what for me started to become so clear, and I get it deeper and on deeper and deeper levels every day, is life and death. In a way, there is no life and there is no death. There is no death and there is no life. There is a continuation yeah. and there is transformation within form. And we give it life and the name life and we give it the name death. But that it is birthing a new, new life. And when you are born, then you are on the journey to death. Yeah. And... <laughs> So when you are that, you are immediately in that journey of, of being born again. So it is, it is so magical when we are willing to open up the vision, to open up the place, the space, time. You can call it whatever you want to call it for me. But when we open up everything as... We take it so for granted that every year we have four seasons and on date that, 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 the season. We flips. decided the season changes. We take that for granted because if we wouldn't take that for granted, then we don't have the need to take on and mm. to hold on on it. So also there what is nature initiating us 
mm -hmm. with that and life. And yes, seasons are still there, but do they show up in a different way? As we know also that we had eras, the ice, mm -hmm. lots, we, we had so many things, but it is so long ago that we can't see that even in a similar way as the seasons we know within a year. So, of course, because we are not really present with those energies, and we can, it's not because of, of it was 100,000 years ago that, that the energy not, is not present because energy never dies. Yeah. But we can't remember it immediately. And it's not required that we remember it as in an immediate, clear picture. Even that is not required. Just opening up the space for the possibilities. What is there? What is there really going on? And that is something to, in a way, to stay with climate change because I brought it up where I have been looking at Earth history. I mean, Earth wasn't born yesterday, quote, unquote. Hmm. The, there were different climates, and those climates were from hot and burning thing, things burning up, uh, so to speak, to uh, glaciers covering a huge part of the earth yeah. and anything in between because you don't just jump from A to B in, in a second. So what if the earth, just because it's been relatively the same for the last two, three, maybe 4,000 years, uh, that doesn't mean that this is it. Exactly. Earth has changed and what if it's time for earth to change and there i mean i remember ages ago probably 20 years ago or so uh seeing a cartoon uh with the earth and meteors and the, in the universe and the earth saying oh god i would love to have a good meteor shower and it, it's sort of really uh way before climate change and everything it really got to the point that uh you know yeah something could be different and even going with that karina all the different climate periods big periods of yeah. time did it go together also with evolution of our mankind the humanity as within consciousness, within civilizations, within morality, within whatever it was. So also here, where do we in general, I do not mean you and me in general, we mankind take it for granted that we are on the top of everything. And that is how a human being has to be, has to look like, has to, what if there is, even within us, also again, an evolution going on that we are not really willing to acknowledge because do we separate there also the climate change from what the divine, of the divinity in everything, also in the earth, as in our human bodies. You know, the one thing that I have learned is that a lot of people do not like change. Exactly, yeah. And it takes a certain willingness 
to let things unfold instead of being in control uh, to allow the change to happen, to go with the change, to even recognize the change. Oh, yeah. something is changing. Instead of going, oh, the world is falling apart. The sky is falling. You know? That is something that makes me so happy. Change is, yeah, yeah every day. It, it would be so boring for me showing up every day the same way the same things the i'm so happy when i go through photos or whatever memories that i can acknowledge the change within me and externally that and even you know i mean how it would be boring for me if i would wake up every day at the same time, have the same breakfast, a very similar lunch, a very similar or even the same uh, dinner, depending on which one is the warm meal and which one is the cold meal. Sandwich could be the same, cooked meal slightly different, and I go to bed at a certain time, and that goes at least five days a week maybe a slight variation on the weekend. Oh, well, Karina, but you, you do miss a point there. When you have a life like that, then you are really healthy because you know what to eat, you know how many, many hours sleep you require, you, you know how to move. You know. So you are really okay. healthy there. <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I, I required the love. I, you know, it's it really, uh, it's so damn boring, and I, if I know, what if if I no, not even know, if I'm willing to ask my body, what do you want to eat? I will eat differently because I don't think my body would like the same thing. Uh, and especially after a week. You know, Someone is say, coming hey, in, Karina. It would have a tantrum. <laughs> Someone is commenting in Dutch and it says, stop it. Like what we are bringing up now, perhaps it is about the healthy stuff and the boring thing of every day, the same thing. But I know people that are really lacking having a life like that and and the way yeah. i see it and the way i perceive it and feel it that's not living that's not alive but hey it fits them and they are happy with it so live it live yeah. it it's not up on me what that creates in their life i'm just saying for myself that's something that not works well that not fits with me and I choose different. And what if saying this, it doesn't work for me, I like it different, is opening the door, giving permission for somebody who has learned all their life that this is how you need to live, yeah. to say, hmm, Maybe I don't need to live that way. Maybe I can spice it up or change it up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, we can be the invitation to some other energy. And if it is refused yeah. or if it is thrown away, it's all fine. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I have to stop to choose what I choose. Yeah. It's my journey. And what if we have a willingness to respect that? Exactly. Across the board, that not the, let's say the extremes usually tend to say, you are doing it wrong, you need to do it my way. And Listen. what if we can respect and allow for that to be the case? Because, because I am so grateful. Oh, sorry. Go. No, no. 
Go ahead. I am so grateful for those who showing me that way of living. Yeah. Because when they show me, it can trigger something within me. And I can ask myself, is this something that would work for me? Yeah. So I go again into the possibilities, not out of judgment, not out of making me wrong, them wrong, right, me, myself, or them. It is, yeah, that's balancing. That is, everything shows up. What is required to become more conscious, aware of. So yeah. I can choose. I can go for the possibilities, whatever. And, you know, I, I have found myself and I still find myself uh, talking about, oh, you could live this way or should live this way. And I'm wondering then, so how does that look like lift? And in that sense, having people showing me how that looks like lift, it allows me to a, a different way of looking at it and coming back to would that work for me? Yes, no. Yeah. Doesn't mean yeah. it's right or wrong, but would that work for me? Exactly. I'm willing to go there. And I'm coming also from a time that I would judge that and knowing and perceiving other possibilities and then judging them, those possibilities I was required or I was willing to perceive, judging them as the positive ones. So I would do everything to get that out and showing them the positivity of that other choice, of that other possibility, which in truth was nothing about possibilities, was nothing about positivity, was only judgment. Hey, we learn what we learn when we learn it. Yep. Great conversation, Karini. I love it. <clears throat> I yeah. love it. So what are the possibilities for the future with our Facebook lives? You never know. <laughs> and can I add one more thing on possibility? Yes. Making a mistake yeah. is adding to the possibilities. Lovely. Because how much do, if I make a mistake, my initial reaction is, is oh, boo, you made a mistake. <laughs> and what if I can, A, stop that self-judgment and B, look at, so how else could I have done it? What else is possible? And there is exactly a miracle. And you don't have to, to regret what you yeah. chose before because always making choices from where we are on our journey, the consciousness, the whatever it's, it is, Karina. And we are not the same consciousness across the day. I mean, at least I know that I do this. <laughs> Absolutely. I can have con very conscious moments and then I can go as unconscious as possible. Yeah. And then it, it hits you again as, then, oh, what yeah. am I choosing here? <laughs> what, are, what, is, what else is possible here? So, yes, it is so. And, and what everything is conscious, consciousness. We don't yeah. act conscious all the time. But everything is part of consciousness. So whatever. Everything is part of consciousness. And how much have we defined what consciousness is and what it means? Yeah. And if we are willing also to see at the end of the day, before we go to sleep, how much did I change today? Mm -hmm. Well, and perhaps also if there was interaction with other people willing to perceive what contribution was I truly today for earth, for the people I saw, for my family, for my body, for whatever. If we are really more present with those things, 
the shifts are so, yeah. There is so much bad word rapid. present. Yes, yes, I know, I know. So it's time to not be present any longer and we say goodbye. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you and we'll see you with what theme? Whatever shows up. Whatever shows up. Take care. Bye-bye.